filed for full custody after finding out my ex-wife let her drug addicted boyfriend near our kids. My parents are defending and taking her side while calling me cold-hearted. Hi, everyone, so I recently did something and I don't know if it's right or wrong, but everybody is really upset with me for it. It wouldn't usually matter, but even my parents are not with me on this, so I'm here for some clarity. So this is about me and my ex-wife, I will refer to her as Tara. She and I are both 30 and we have two kids together. We have a 7-year-old son and a 5-year-old daughter. However, we have been separated for two years now and she has partial custody but the kids only visit her on the weekend since that's what she wanted. We got married when we were 22 after dating throughout college and it was a blissful time initially. But then, it was the monotony that started getting to us, and we started falling out of love. We just grew apart, I guess we started fighting a lot after our daughter was born and we couldn't bring ourselves to agree on anything at all. She wanted something different from life, and I really didn't want the same thing as her. We just realized that we were very different as people and we couldn't make it work anymore. We had been trying our best, for the sake of our kids, but we were fighting so often that it wasn't really good for them either. I suggested marriage counseling towards the very end, as a last ditch effort to make it work, but she declined and said that she would much rather just get divorced than draw it out and I thought it was fair. So, I work in the catering industry and have a business of my own and she is a high school teacher. I earn significantly more than her so of course she gets alimony, as well as child support, even though she only has the kids for the weekend and can very well support them, but her lawyer managed to work out a good deal for her and I couldn't back out of it. It's been two years and we function a lot better now, as parents, since we don't have to live with each other. I wouldn't say that the divorce was an ugly one, but it was still a divorce, so it wasn't great either. But we have continued to co-parent our children, and so far, everything has been going great. Tara and I don't really keep in touch, we only talk to each other when we have to discuss something with regard to the kids, but other than that, we have nothing to say to each other. The only time we get to interact is when I drop off the kids at her place or when she drops them back off at mine, that's pretty much the only time we meet each other and we're both fine with that. And for the holidays, we try to spend some time together for the sake of the kids, but that's about it. So overall, I would say that we have been on decent terms, and I didn't think there was anything going wrong so far because the kids seemed happy and content. But then, around two weeks ago, Tara told me that she wanted to talk to me in the middle of the week. I didn't know what to expect but then she told me that she wanted to discuss child support and wanted to increase it. She said that before she started the renegotiation officially, she wanted to talk to me in person and get it out of the way, so I wouldn't be taken by surprise. And it was a good move, I guess because I really was taken by surprise when she told me that she wanted to increase the amount because as far as I was concerned, I think it was more than generous, because not only was she a working woman herself, she was also getting alimony and child support. I think that's a fair amount of money that she was receiving from me and it was almost 25% of my salary that I gave to her every month, so I didn't see any reason as to why she would want more. We met for lunch to discuss this and she told me that she was just struggling financially because she was thinking about quitting her job and joining her friend in her startup business and actually putting her marketing degree to some use, so for that, she needed to increase the child support because she didn't want them to suffer for her own sake. The startup was not quite profitable yet, so she was going to receive quite a low salary, it was still in its beginning stages, but she was fine with it for herself. She said that she only wanted the kids to be provided for and taken care of and it wouldn't be possible if she started skimping out because of her own shortcomings, due to the change in her career. I could understand where she was coming from but I couldn't wrap my head around it because no matter how low her salary was, she was still receiving alimony and child support. Besides, my kids only spent the weekend with her and it was just two days out of the whole week. Had it not been for her amazing lawyer, she probably wouldn't even have been able to get child support out of me for just two days of the week. Everything else was taken care of for them. Anyway, I bought them whatever they needed and paid for them to go to school and everything. So technically, there was no need for me to pay child support anyway, but I was doing it out of the goodness of my heart, because I knew that Tara didn't make as much money as me and I wanted to be able to help her out. But increasing the child support was out of the question for me, I was already helping her out more than I was required to and that should have been good enough for her. So I told her, as politely as I could, that I could not increase the amount of child support because anyway, it was more than what she required, and if she couldn't make it work, then it was on her. I reminded her that she was also receiving alimony and it's quite a lot of money, so there was no reason for her to ask for more. Instead of taking it kindly, she started getting mad at me and told me that I was being selfish. She insisted that this was just for the kids and I needed to think about them before coming to a decision like this. Got into a bit of an argument there, and we couldn't bring ourselves to agree whether she needed more child support or not. I kept telling her the kids only spend the weekend at her place, and that's just two days, so she doesn't really need that much money unless she is not even willing to take care of them for two days. That's a different story altogether, and she said that it was very insulting that I was insinuating that she didn't care about our kids and didn't want to spend money on them, but she reminded me that she earned less than me. We just kept bickering and it was clear that we were getting nowhere so we decided to put our conversation on hold and I went back home feeling really annoyed. 
The only reason I had even agreed to the terms of the alimony and child support the first time around was because her lawyer had a great deal on the table for her and my parents were the ones who made me agree to it because they said that the mother of my children and whether I liked it or not, I owed it to her to support her because I made a lot more money than her and this is the least that I could do for her. So I had no other choice but to accept it because my parents literally guilt tripped me into doing it. But this time, I didn't tell my parents about any of it at all because I was sure that if I told them, they were just going to do the same thing again. They, in particular, were very attached to Tara when she was married to me. It's no secret that my parents had always wanted a daughter but instead, I was born. I was treated well enough when I was a kid but when I saw how excited they were when I got married, I knew instantly that was something slightly weird about the whole thing. They would keep calling Tara, the daughter that they never had and it was meant to be endearing but it just made me feel weird because I knew their history and I knew that it was slightly disturbing. They were even more disappointed than me when we started getting divorced, and during the process, they were on her side and constantly kept checking on her without bothering me. Even after the divorce, they kept in touch with her, and even though I didn't like it, it didn't matter to them. The only reason I haven't cut my parents out of my life yet is because they are really old and I am their only child, no matter how they treat Tara, so I can't abandon them. They might not have one, but I do have a conscience and I can't handle it. So it's tough but I try to make it a point to see them at least once a month. However, I don't think that's going to happen anymore because they are being jerks about this whole thing. But anyway, coming back to what happened after I had the discussion with Tara. So that day, after that lunch, I could sense that something was really not adding up here. In spite of getting so much money from me, she still wanted more, and I couldn't make sense of it. So I decided to start snooping because I knew that there was something that she was hiding from me, there just had to be. I decided to start by combing through her social media and I was quite meticulous about it. I went through her entire life and it wasn't really difficult since she has a very restricted social media presence. She had like 150 followers, and I went through each and every one of them. It was mostly just friends, family, and colleagues, but then I started finding random guys. There were around 10 of them and I figured that must have been her date from the past couple of months or something because I had heard from a couple of my friends that she was going out with other guys again. Only one of the profiles really stood out for me because that guy was really young, he couldn't have been older than 22 and it was very obvious from his profile that he was definitely into some shady stuff. For starters, he had a bunch of photos on his account of a joint in his hand and smoke covering his face. It was aesthetic and everything but I didn't really have Tara pegged as someone who would be into this because she and I really aren't hip and stuff. Besides, she has two kids, so I don't think that going out with a drug addict was a good idea for her. I could also tell that this guy was trouble because he just looked the type and I did not get a good vibe from him. I don't mean to say that everybody who looks like him is the same but I could tell from his profile that he was really proud of the fact that he was a junkie. His profile screamed trouble, and I cannot emphasize that enough. Tattoos all over his body, bragging about drugs and stuff, and in one of the photos, I swear he had a rifle, and he was showing it off. You guys know exactly the type of person that I'm talking about. So that image really stuck out in my head, and I could tell that there was something about him. Tara had no business following a guy like this, and she had even commented on a bunch of photos with heart eye emojis. I decided to go deeper and forward that profile to a friend of mine whose uncle is in the force because I just had a feeling that there was something shady about this guy. We will call him Sean. A couple of days after I had forwarded that profile to my friend, I was told that his uncle had told him that this guy had been brought in two years ago for aggravated assault and battery and had been let out last year. Apparently, Sean had gotten into a fight with a dealer and had attacked the other guy with a fire extinguisher in the stomach. Thankfully, the other guy wasn't badly hurt, but somebody on the street saw it go down and called the police. My friend's uncle had remembered it specifically because he had been the one to make the arrest and process Sean. I was right about him all along, he was a dangerous guy and I didn't like the fact that Tara had something to do with him, but I didn't know about it. So I decided to take a huge risk because of a feeling that I had in my gut and decided to show the least incriminating picture of Sean to my kids, to ask them if they had seen this guy before. They hesitated for a bit, but after I told them that they would not get in trouble for telling me the truth, they seemed to open up and told me that they knew this guy very well. It was really scary because they told me that apparently, this was Tara's, a new boyfriend, and they had known him for the last six months. Not only that, but Tara had given them very specific instructions not to tell me about any of this, because otherwise, she would make sure that my kids got into really bad trouble. And she had scared them well because even while telling me about all of this, they seemed very paranoid about it. She had apparently threatened to show up at their school and have them expelled and even said that she would have them sent to an orphanage if they tattled on her. She said that not only would she hate them forever, even I would never forgive them for being terrible children. And they are just kids, they believed all of it, and so they never told me anything, because their mother had put up a very convincing act. I was horrified that she would teach our kids something like this, but it was about to get much worse. My son then told me that for the past couple of months, ever since Tara had started seeing Sean, they would spend all the time together in their house. Apparently, Sean waited for me to be gone and then he would show up at Tara's house. They were living together, but whenever I would come to drop the kids off, he would leave the house and go for a walk so I wouldn't be able to find out. 
He told me that Sean and Tara apparently smoked most of the time that they spent at her house and he mentioned some funny smelling cigarettes, not like the ones that other people smoked. I knew what he was talking about and I was appalled that Tara would do that around our kids. He also mentioned a lot of other things, like Tara and Sean would occasionally get into fights and he had overheard a lot of talk about needles and pills left in the washroom. That's when my heart dropped because that could not be good. Thankfully, my son was quick to inform me that he never went anywhere even close to his mother's room or the attached washroom. I realized that she had been using the money that I was sending her to support her addicted boyfriend, and even though that was just a theory, I knew that there was no other explanation. What my son told me, was enough for me to immediately call my lawyer up, and I told him that I wanted to file for full custody of my children. And then I told him whatever my son had told me and he was just as shocked as I was, because it was really out of character for Tara to do something like this, because it was incredibly irresponsible and selfish of her. I didn't even call Tara to tell her what I had found out that day because I was in shock, and I didn't even know what to say to her. So she only found out about me filing for full custody a couple of days later when she was served with the papers. She called me up immediately to confront me about it and started yelling at me because she thought that I would know about her and Sean. But before she could go any further, I decided to tell her that I had found out everything and I couldn't believe that she would be so reckless with our children. She pretended to be confused for the first few minutes, but then I told her that there was no use acting innocent anymore because our son had told me the truth and I knew everything about Sean now. So then she dropped the act and started begging me to take it back. She claimed that she really was in love with Sean and she was trying to get him out of his addiction. She asked me to increase the child support, only because she wanted to help him and send him to rehab so that she could get married to him after he recovered and they could live their life together. She was really emotional through all of it and kept telling me that she did care about the kids, but she also cared about Sean and she really wanted to be with him. Apparently, they had met almost a year ago, and have been getting quite serious, which is why he had moved in with her. She knew about his past, and that was one of the first things that he had told her when they matched on their app, but I didn't care about any of it because none of it made any sense to me. I only cared about what she had said to our kids and the situation that she had put them in, which was just not. She had been forcing them to live with her boyfriend, who was an addict, whether she liked it, or not. And to make matters worse, he had also just come out of jail and she didn't think that it was important to tell me about any of this. I told her that I had already made up my mind about the custody, and nothing she could say, or do now would change it. I was incredibly disappointed in her, not just because of her taste in men, but also because she had let me down in a colossal way. Maybe we hadn't been good partners to each other but I had always assumed that she would be a good mother to our kids because that's what I had seen firsthand when we were married. That was the reason why I had agreed to support and alimony both, without batting an eye, but now, she had proven me wrong, because she was not even a good mother anymore. She had completely lost the run of herself and was letting a drug addict near our kids. It wasn't even as though he was good with them, because, from what my children told me, they were very scared of him because he seemed quite unstable and would often freak out over small stuff and have total meltdowns. So they mostly stayed away from him, and it suited both of them. She kept begging me to cancel the proceedings, but it was already done now, and there was no way that I was going back because, for me, there was nothing more important than the safety and well-being of my children. And I had learned, the hard way, that I could no longer trust Tara anymore. Even if she broke up with Sean or promised me that my kids would never have to be near him again, I would just never be able to trust her because she had obviously let her feelings cloud her judgment. So I told her that she had better prepare herself and her lawyer for what was about to come because I wasn't going to let her off the hook easily this time, and I wouldn't stop fighting until I had full custody of my children. And after that conversation, I thought she would at least try to understand where I was coming from because I was very upset, and rightfully so. Instead, she went from my parents and started complaining about me and, of course, they couldn't help but intervene because they thought they knew the best. They called me up a couple of days ago and said that I needed to stop ignoring the messages that Tara had been sending me because she was the mother of my children, and I needed to show her some respect. It was the same argument all over again, the same one that they had used during my divorce and had talked me into agreeing to alimony and child support, but it was not going to work this time because it was my children who were at stake and I was not going to let them talk me into doing anything that I didn't want to. I had already spoken to my kids and they said that they did not want to go back to Tara's house anymore because they were scared of Sean and that was all that I needed to hear to make up my mind. Now, come what may, I was not going to let anybody change it. But my parents really started harping on about how I was being very selfish and that instead of trying to take away the kids from her, I should understand that she was in love, and it was not the right decision for the kids either because in the long run, they would need their mother. I'm not sure how that works because my kids themselves have told me that they don't want to go back to their mother's place on the weekends anymore, at least, not for as long as Sean is there. They say that it is very cold-hearted of me to file for full custody just because she fell in love with somebody and that guy happened to be a junkie. Full disclosure, I couldn't care less about who she was in love with or who she was living with, but as soon as she put that person in contact with my children, it is my business. And I have decided that it's not good for my kids to be around them anymore like any other parent would. However, my parents disagree, and think that I am overreacting and making a way bigger deal out of this than I should. 
I don't even know what to think anymore, and I have started to doubt myself because the last time I spoke to my parents, they were quite bent on this. I know that they are biased and I know that they have some weird issues with Tara but I still don't want to make a mistake, which is why I am here. I'm pretty sure that I'm doing the right thing, but I need an objective set of opinions just to make sure that I am. So, Ida for filing for full custody of my children when I found out that my ex-wife was dating a junkie? Update 1, hello, thank you for all the love and support in the comment section on my original post. It really means the world to us, my kids and I are very happy and they are a lot freer and relieved right now since all their secrets are out and they don't have to carry around the burden of that anymore. It's been a few days since I posted and my comments were flooded with suggestions on what to do I have decided to start therapy for my children because clearly, they have gone through something very difficult. And I need to work really hard to undo all of the damage that my ex-wife has caused. Speaking of her, I have blocked her and I haven't even bothered to read any of the messages that she sent me last because I'm just not interested in whatever rubbish she has to say now. She can go and try to defend herself and cry about how I am being selfish and inconsiderate, but it's not going to change the facts. She was a terrible mother and if anything, she was the one who was very selfish. She should have always thought about our kids first, instead of thinking about how Sean would feel if she broke up with him for the sake of her children. It's just crazy how she thinks that it was fine for her to lie to me all these months and now I'm just supposed to accept it and move on? Yes, fat chance of that happening. I've also blocked my parents because I don't want anything to do with them anymore. If they love Tara so much, they can just rely on her for everything now. If there is ever any trouble after this, they know who to call. And I'll give you guys one hint, it's not me. Update 2, hey, so Tara and I are meeting with a mediator in a couple of days, and today, she chose to show up at my house. Thankfully, the kids were at school when she showed up but I still didn't let her in because I wanted nothing to do with her. I didn't even want to speak to her, but she kept trying to talk to me while she was outside the door. She was crying hysterically and begging me to let her see the children. Even after I told her that they were at school, she refused to believe me and said that she knew I was hiding them somewhere and trying to keep them away from her. That went on for a couple of minutes before I finally got tired of arguing with her and I told her that she needed to leave and if she didn't clear out within the next 5 minutes then I would call the cops. She was already going to be in a lot of trouble, and was definitely going to lose custody, she did not want to add a run-in with the cops to that list as well. I guess that scared her and she left, but not before she told me that I would not be able to tear her children away from her. She had no idea how crazy she even sounded, and I didn't have the heart to tell her that her children had already torn themselves away from her, they were the ones who had told me that they didn't want to go back to her anymore. It was her own behavior that had ruined everything, and now, she couldn't run away from it anymore. I'm just thankful that she left before the kids came back home because that would have led to another showdown and I just am not in the mood for that. I have told my children that they will not be seeing Tara or their grandparents anymore and they seem to be okay with both of those things, so it's going great so far. They have also opened up quite a lot in therapy, and I think, with time, we can fix everything. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. Update 3, Hello, everyone. I know that I had been MIA for a really long time but that was because I was battling it out in court with Tara for the custody of my children. It had to go to court because we couldn't come to a settlement with the mediator. But I already knew that was going to happen because there was no way that we could come to a common ground. And once it went to court, my lawyer and I had to work really hard to make sure that we got custody because if not, there was just no telling what might do to traumatize the kids even more. Family courts usually try to keep families together, but in this case, thankfully, they did not try to do that because I guess even the judge could see that everything was a hot mess with Tara. I have to give credit where it's due, Tara herself messed up, colossally as well. Even her lawyer, who had managed to outsmart us the first time, couldn't save her this time, because her behavior was just so erratic and unstable, even when we were in court. She was a total disaster, and I almost felt bad for her because of the way that she was acting. But I had no sympathy to spare for her on the parental front, and there was just no way I could let her have custody. We fought tooth and nail, but we managed to get full custody eventually, and my children and I are really happy now. Now I have no reason to keep in touch with Tara, so I have no idea what happened to her afterwards. It doesn't matter anyway, since now my kids are happy and so am I.